What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I want to give you my honest opinion about cannabis tissue culture. Cannabis is a very popular plant. It's always down on the comments, uh, on my emails or phone calls uh, because a lot of people want to do cannabis tissue culture. Now, every time I get an email or a phone call and I reply and ask them what is their goal. And the reason I ask that is because if the, depending on your goal, may, tissue culture may or may not be for you, um, for cannabis at least. Uh, if you are trying to preserve your genetics uh, with tissue culture, I think, uh, yes, tissue culture is great for you. Uh, if you are just trying to store your plants uh, for example, if you have like um, uh, some strains that are very good and you want to keep them um, indefinitely, maybe forever, uh, you can keep those in tissue culture. Obviously, you are going to have to do some work every maybe every couple of months. You have to move them to new media, but um, you can keep them pretty much forever if you keep the the, the work and the accepted technique. Uh, so in if that's the case, I think um, tissue culture is great for you. Another reason to do uh, cannabis tissue culture uh, would be to, to save the plants. Uh, you may have a plant that is very good, but unfortunately got disease, it got maybe uh, got a virus. So with tissue culture, you can do what is called a shoot tip uh, induction, uh, which basic, basically takes the apicomeri stem, which is the just the apicomeri stem, which is virus free. It hasn't got uh, it hasn't got contaminated yet, um, and you can place that in tissue culture and get new plants uh, that are disease free. Now, this is not for beginners. This is an advanced technique that will require some someone who who knows how to do tissue culture, who has um, done it for a while, and then um, it feels comfortable doing that. Uh, it's not. Not for beginners, it's something that you are not going to learn in maybe a week of work. It is something that you need to, it requires a microscope, it requires a very precision hands. Um, when you're going to do tissue quarter for the first time, I guarantee your, shy, your hands are going to be shaking. You need to have doctor's hands to do this because you have to be very precise just to take the apicumeri stem uh, without damaging and introduce it to tissue quarter. So, if that you go to save plants, I think tissue culture is great for you. But like I say, it's more like an advanced technique. So that's probably more for um, your professional labs, uh, for your, if you are trying to do home tissue culture to save, your, to save the plant, it may not be for you. And finally, what most people want to use uh, tissue culture for cannabis. And the reason is because it's a very popular plant it sells for a lot of money and you can make a very decent income from it. However, um, if you want to use tissue culture as your main propagation source, it doesn't really work like that. Let me explain and I'm going to divide this in sections. First of all, it takes longer and second, it's more expensive. And I know what you're saying, then why there are big um, cannabis uh, companies that use tissue culture to propagate their plants. And I'm going to get back to that. But first, let me explain you why it takes longer and it's more expensive. Cannabis is a weed and it grows fast, like very fast. Uh, in traditional cloning, uh, you would take a clones from the mother plants that they are going to be six to 10 inches long. You take the, those cuttings, uh, place some propagation trays, and in about two weeks, they had roots and they are ready to go in the field. On tissue culture, you are taking small cuttings, like about an inch, maybe even less than that. Place those in tissue culture and they're going to take a while to grow. About a month to, to get to a decent size. Uh, obviously, you probably want to propagate them. So you want to use some, root, uh, some multiplication hormones. If you are even allowed to use them, as uh, some plant growth regulators are considered as pesticides by the EPA. 
So whenever I get a, a phone call or an email asking like uh, asking me what is the best media to use for hemp or cannabis, it's like a, I mean I can tell you, however you need to check where your uh, regulations to to see if you are even allowed to use them. So the best way to do it is to check your uh, local extension agents. Uh, they will be able to to answer your questions to know to see if you are allowed to use certain plant grow regulators. If they don't know the answer, they should be able to get you in contact with somebody who knows the, who knows all the regulations regarding to whatever plant you want to grow. And that's going to take some time for, for you to be able to, to get more plants. So you are you are looking for a couple of months until you'll be able to, to move the plants to routine media. And then routine media, you also have to wait maybe two to four weeks to be able to, to get the plants to root. Then you have to move the plants from routine media out to soil and to get it established outside of tissue culture. Um, this is when you lose a lot of plants. You probably want to look, if you are very good uh, on the flasking tissue culture plants, you may get 90% success rate, but you still want to lose about 10%. You also lose plants whenever you are taking traditional cuttings. Um, however, in tissue culture, it is harder and they take longer to acclimate. So you are looking for maybe two weeks, maybe another month for the plants to acclimate. The plants are going to be smaller, maybe about three, five inches. You need to let them grow to about a foot. That That is basically like the optimal size for selling the plants. And now you are looking for about a process that's going to take you about six months. That's a long time, especially because um, if you are using cannabis as a crop, you probably want all the plants at the same time. And that's also a lot of work. That's why it's also more expensive. It is a lot of work to take the flask, a bunch of plants at the same time you want to need a lot of greenhouse space to acclimate those plants. And then you, hopefully you can sell all of those at the same time. That's why it's longer and it's more expensive as well. And we haven't even talked about the cost of setting a tissue quarter lab. If you are starting as a home tissue quarter lab, you may be able to spend maybe a couple hundred dollars to maybe a couple thousands. Um, if you're going all in and in setting up a professional tissue quarter lab with a lamina flow hood, a narrow clave, um, growing lines, you're probably talking like several thousands of dollars where a, lami a professional lamina flow hood brand new is probably between five to ten thousand dollars. An autoclave is also going to cost about over a thousand dollars. Grow lines are also quite expensive and also is they take quite a bit of energy uh, like electricity. So the cost to set up a tissue quarter lab it can be quite high. As a business perspective, you can have a bunch of uh, greenhouse workers to take cuttings from the from the plants. That's a, as a traditional cloning. Um, if you want to use a tissue culture to do all your propagation, you want to have you will need um, tissue culture technicians, which are obviously more expensive. Uh, now you don't need that many technicians. Uh, one technician should be able to propagate over one million plants in a year. However, the technicians are not the ones that are going to get the plants out of tissue culture and put those in soil. You still want to need those greenhouse workers. So on top of the greenhouse worker, you still, you are using uh, tissue culture technicians to do the propagation work. And then you're using the greenhouse worker to take the plants out of tissue culture and put those in soil. So it's still the same amount of work. It's just that you are adding another step. Um, so now let me explain you why there are companies that use tissue culture for propagation. Before I do that, the main reason of using clones, regardless if they come from traditional cloning or tissue culture, is because you don't want any male plants on your uh, fields or greenhouses unless you are seed bulking. However, 99% of the growers want all female plants as those are the ones that produce the pods. It sounds like I'm against cannabis uh, tissue culture for propagation, but I am not. 
The way the, com the big companies do it is they use a hybrid method. And what does that mean? That means that the tissue culture technicians do maintenance on the model plants. So they, these companies have a bunch of model plants and the, te the tissue culture technicians, their job is to keep those, um, let's say, fresh, where they take cuttings, put those in tissue culture, and every few weeks or every few months, they, they um, replace those plants with new ones. So they always have model plants ready to go for the greenhouse workers to come and take cuttings from those plants. That's how they propagate uh, hundreds or, or thousands of plants very quickly because they always have model plants ready to go to take cuttings. But the tissue culture technicians, their job is just to keep those model plants alive pretty much forever, uh, virus, uh, disease free, um, very healthy plants. Uh, that's what those companies has their good reputation because their plants are always very healthy because they come from tissue culture. They are disease free and they are able to keep them like that. Uh, otherwise, if you are only taking cuttings and then making your own mother plants from the traditional cuttings, you can have diseases, you can have viruses going on. Uh, the greenhouse is very difficult to work on a greenhouse. I, I was a greenhouse uh, manager myself, and it's very difficult just to keep those plants disease free all the time. So the tissue culture technicians, every what they do, the big companies, what they do is that they use the mother plants for maybe two weeks, four weeks, and they, they throw them away. They get rid of those plants or they sell those plants uh, because there are always new plants coming out of the tissue culture labs all the time. That's how the big companies keep their plants healthy and they can propagate thousands of plants every month. Just a recap, especially if you are a small home grower. If you want to keep your genetics, tissue culture is good for you. If you want to restore disease plants that go to a virus, tissue culture may not be the best for you uh, unless you have a lot of practice in tissue culture. Uh, if you want to propagate plants uh, for an income, um, this is my suggestion. Introduce your mother plants to tissue culture propagate them. You don't need hundreds or thousands of plants for each of your mother plant. Um, you just need enough to keep a cycle where every few weeks you can replace those mother plants with new ones. Um, now doing this, um, you don't even have to use plant grow regulators. I actually um, recommend recommend you not to use plant grow regulators on hemp or cannabis as, as like I say, uh, it is a lot of regulations going on with, with these plants where um, they are considered pesticides by the EPA. So you don't really want to mess with all of that stuff. Um, your job is to introduce those plants to tissue culture. They will naturally uh, multiply in tissue culture. Uh, you don't need plant grow regulators to do that. You just have enough plants when, so whenever you need them, have them ready to deflast and replace those mother plants. Uh, that way you take the plants from, take the cones from those mother plants and then you can sell all those other, the, the plants that you use propagate using the traditional cloning, which like I say, you can take clones that are six to 10 inches and have them ready to sell in maybe two or three weeks instead of doing everything on tissue culture where it's going to take you six months to a year just to get enough plants to sell. Anyways, let me know if you have more questions about growing cannabis or hemp in tissue culture. Uh, or you can send me an email. Uh, my email is francisco at plantcelltechnology.com or if you want a more in-depth consultation of not only cannabis or hemp or any other plant, you can send an email at info at plantcelltechnology.com and we will going to take care of you. All right, I will see you next time. Goodbye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching the video. 
If you're enjoying these Tissue Culture videos, be sure to follow us on social media for more informative content. And if you're interested in conducting your own tissue culture experiments, make sure to check us out at PlantCellTechnology.com for all the products you need to get started. Use the code FP10 for 10% off your first purchase.